We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Joe Biden picks a strange advocate. Hunter Biden ditches out on his deposition and a whole lot more on this edition of Liberty Nation Radio. Heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. And remember, this show is proudly sponsored by LibertyNation.com, where you can access a range of biting and brilliant shows to whet your appetite for freedom and your fondness for the great American Constitution. President Joe Biden feeling the strain of multiple polls and wars and economic downturn has decided to reach out to the one person he believes can save him. Now, is that decision fateful or fortunate? We're very fortunate ourselves to have Liberty Nation's senior political analyst and longtime host of this here radio show, Mr. Tim Donner, to help fathom that out. Tim, tell me it ain't so. (laughs) Well, I think that's what Democrats are saying across the country. Mark, when the word got out that not only is Hillary Clinton serving as a surrogate for the Joe Biden campaign, but she's serving as a primary surrogate and her role is expected to increase over the next year. You know, I got to be honest with you. When I first saw it, I was so gobsmacked that it actually allowed me to do something that rarely happens. Leave me speechless. <laughs> Look, I, I don't even know where to begin uh, with this one. Do they really think that the face of democratic futility, the face of defeat to Donald Trump, the face of the email scandal, Mm. the face of election denialism? Yes, she denied her defeat in the election the same way Trump is accused of doing it in 2020. I mean, she is just absolutely toxic. I don't have to tell you or anybody else that. And The only thing I can think that there's two things that might make sense. Number one, this might be the only way for Joe Biden to get Bill Clinton involved, Mm. who is, after all, while he's aging and not what he used to be, he's still a two term president that Democrats like and the general public generally feels pretty good about. The other explanation is how I ended my article. And I did it tongue in cheek, but then after I wrote it and it was published, I started to think maybe it's a little, there's a little bit of truth to it. And that is that hiring the most uh, disgraced loser Democrat in recent memory is Joe Biden's way of saying, look, I don't really want to win this election. Then I, yeah. I get plausible deniability. I can bring her in. I'm I'm bringing the team in to Mm. uh, lift me up, knowing that she's only going to drag me down. I mean, here's a question, Mark. Yeah. If if one of your principal talking points is that Trump is an election denier, why would your chief surrogate be someone who herself has denied her defeat in 2016, although she did concede on election night? You know, I I want to pull back to your original idea that there are perhaps two reasons that he's got her on board. One was the first one that you said was because it's a, it's a connection towards Bill Clinton, Bubba access to bill who is still very, very popular, still Mm -hmm. very, very popular. No doubt about it. Um, And, and not disliked, which is I think the key thing, people don't hate Bill Clinton, even, even people, uh, you know, MAGA (laughs) Republicans don't hate Bill Clinton. He's like, well, he's a Democrat. No, Bill's all right. Um, but here's the thing. The most notable part is he wants the attention, perhaps, of a former two-term president. I know another former two-term president who doesn't seem to be uh, willing to jump on board the Biden train. And I refer, of course, to... Yes, that's Mr. true. George Barack W. Obama. Bush. George W. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, the other one. The other, the, the other one, yeah, the other one. Look, I think... You, you bring up a really good point because Barack Obama is the natural person to go out on the stump and to make the case. Let's, sorry, just, just, to, just to interrupt for a second. Barack and Michelle. Barack. Look, you Barack and through, Michelle, the both of let's them go together. Through the, let's go through the hierarchy of yeah. a democratic leadership. Obama has to be right at the top yeah. because he's still wildly popular and he's a two-term president. 
uh, you'd have to put uh, in second place, you'd have to put Bill Clinton because of the fact he was a two term president and he's still popular. In third place, you would put Michelle Obama because she never made a bad decision as a president. And she's wildly popular among Democrats. There's actually, but if Tim, once Tim, you get I have that same record. Three, I've never yeah. made a bad decision as a president yes, of the United I, States yes. either. Exactly. Neither have I. Um, so, I so might, you talk about the hierarchy there. Yes. Yeah, so the hierarchy goes from, uh, uh, from Obama to Bill Clinton to Michelle Obama. And once you get past those three, you're now essentially dumpster diving among the rest of the Democrats. And Hillary's the, the best of the rest because the top three will not get out there. Mm. Uh, in support of Joe Biden. Now, maybe they will later. But by then, won't it be too late? I mean, won't the issue of his age only have gotten worse and be insoluble, totally insoluble? He can't reverse the age issue. But look, the top Democrats are not stepping up in his support when he's under siege in the polls. What does that tell you, Mark? You, you know what? This brings us kind of to your second reasoning and also the conclusion of your, your excellent article on the pages of LibertyNation.com. I recommend everybody goes and reads it under the Tim Donner byline. Uh, is that maybe Joe Biden just doesn't want to be president of the United States again, but he sees no way out. And you, you've got to have some sympathy for that. But this is a trap of his own making uh, because... If, if not Joe Biden, then who? I mean, if he stays in, he, I mean, he must be feeling the, the age and the, the wear and tear on his body, not just physically, but mentally as well. But then who's left? Kamala Harris? This, she is the, she's yeah, even more not. unpopular than Joe Biden. That's, that's a big problem. That's the chicken that has come home to roost because she was picked strictly uh, to run, not to serve. They knew that having a woman of color on the ticket, even though she was so wildly unpopular herself, would be just the ticket for Joe Biden in 2020. But now they're stuck with her. They can't dump her because the progressives would go wild. Oh, yeah. I was going to use a word that was like bat s yeah. <laughs> slash, slash t, but, you know, mm. uh, I, I think it's pretty clear that the confidence in Joe Biden on the Democratic side is extremely low. And you make the point that this is a problem of his own making, because if he had decided correctly in the view of like 90 percent of Americans not to run for a second term previously, if he had announced earlier this year, for example, he's not going to run again, he could have done a victory lap talked mm -hmm. about how he stabilized the country. He got all this legislation done. And now he's going to pass it on to the next generation of Democratic leadership. He could have, uh, I mean, it really could have served him well to announce yeah. he wasn't going to run for a second term, as he promised in 2020. Instead, he's now become the poster child for Democratic futility. He's going to get blamed if he loses to Donald Trump. And he will go down in history as the man who put Donald Trump back in the White House. In, indeed, uh, either Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. Nobody wants to be responsible on the left. Nobody wants to be responsible for those Ooh, two choices. Is that the understatement of the mm. year? We'll be back with Tim Donner after this short break talking Joe Biden's electoral chances, Donald Trump's electoral chances, and what's happening in the primaries. Don't go anywhere. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Don't get caught up in the media madness. Join our movement for free thinking and free speech at LibertyNation.com. Publishing news and analysis 24-7 with original articles by our team of authors who tell it like it is. Join us each week for online TV shows, The Uprising Podcast, and Liberty Nation Radio. We believe in free thinking and free speech. We are 
LibertyNation.com.